on today's episode of Cheating When Love Lies. Silence drags the ghosted and ignored partner into a graveyard of sorts. On one tombstone, it's marked silence. The other is marked total dismissal. Silence and dismissal, the kissing cousins of a torturous death to any relationship. On today's episode, a married lover is ghosted by her married partner for months until one day, fate brings a chance for her to win him back. I'm Jillian Hamilton. I've written a short fictional story called Answer Me, You Son of a Bitch, based on this true life conflict. I'll begin the episode by reading the story. After the reading, I'll host a roundtable discussion with my guests and friends, Samantha, David, and John, who will react to the story and share their own thoughts about infidelity. So let's get started. Answer Me, You Son of a Bitch! Think about all the beautiful things in life that can happen in nine months. The birth of a baby, a gratifying academic year, the time that passes from fall to spring. Nine months seemed to symbolize the best possibilities, yet for me it was nine agonizing months of self-torture. Every day for nine months I looked at my phone, 50, 60, 80 times a day, checking to see if he'd had a change of heart and was ready to make amends. We'd had a huge fight, which was the culmination of my brattiness and neediness, my frustration that he wasn't available enough. I expected my lover, a man with a wife and twin teenage boys, to act like my husband and be available, accessible, and obedient. At the time, I was a novice at affairs and acted like a prima donna, which was a bad match for a guy who had a history of cheating and little patience for women who whined. He'd leave his office at lunch, say he was going for a beach run, and sneak over to my place for an afternoon delight of kisses and armchair sex. I was noble enough never to let him in the bedroom that I shared with my husband. Never there, I said. That's just unforgivable. He loved my artsy-fartsy bohemian sense of style. At the time, I wasn't into all the cosmetic this and that, the lasers and filler, the eyelash extensions and fake nails. My hair was wavy and tousled, and he said it made me look more sexy than unkempt. I wore bangles and beads from places I'd been all over the world, and they clank on the armchair when he was inside me, holding me by the hips, pulling me up and down over his lap. We'd known each other for a long time. We were college classmates, What started as friendly text banter became his poetic heartfelt letters and evolved into the occasional drink at the bar after work, which turned into kisses in my living room, then sex by the fireplace. He was a well-known screenwriter, so he wrote beautifully. His DMs were soulful and full of secret confessions, vulnerabilities, and admissions about how much he'd always wanted me. For years, since we'd first met in college, despite the fact that he was really good-looking in that captain-of-the-polo-team sort of way, which made him seem manly and tough. Our 30-year history solidified our relationship as friends and eliminated any concerns that either one of us was a stalker or a psycho. Our affair was rooted in trust. We trusted one another to be discreet, quiet. No one could ever know. We were excellent at covering our tracks, write, delete, Write, delete. No pictures, no videos, no calls on the weekend or at dinner hour. Neither one of us wanted to jeopardize our marriage. We both understood the boundaries of our affair until I lost sight of what was going on and I began to treat him like a husband. Why didn't you answer my text this morning? Although I tried to dampen down my acerbic tone, it was clear that I was annoyed he hadn't responded in a timely way. Looking back, He was probably cleaning out the garage or helping one of the twins fix their car when I reached out. Maybe he was on a bike ride with the guys or getting coffee with his wife. Maybe he just couldn't find a place to go off and start sexting with a house full of family, including his mother-in-law who'd arrived for an extended stay. Maybe he was taking a nap. But I didn't care. I wanted him to respond to me and I wanted it now. Incidents like this happened more than once. 
I started to resent it when he wasn't responding quickly enough or lovingly enough to meet my needs and standards. I began to criticize the way he affaired, and my texts became flippant. Slowly, subconsciously, I was falling for him, wanting him more and more. We'd gotten into a daily rhythm of DMs and texting. When the messages flowed, I was satiated, but any disruptions to our usual pattern of exchange would rattle me. I ended up meeting him in the street and verbally attacking him, then sending him a text that insulted and criticized him. I was ready to threaten with ending it all, hoping that he'd bend and apologize under the pressure. I thought he'd give in because he didn't want to lose our afternoon delight and the woman who admired his writing with such veneration. But I miscalculated. He wrote back saying that our affair was now over and he was dedicating himself 100% to his wife, the twins, and his sick mother-in-law who was moving in. I tried to salvage it by writing a pages-long apology peppered with memories from college, sightings from his writing, sexual innuendo, pleading, and regret. I'd gone from prima donna to placator, throwing everything I had at him, trying desperately to win him back. One day. Two days. Nine days. Nine weeks. Months. He never answered the message. My apology was marked red, but he chose not to respond. All throughout the day, and even more at night with my husband sleeping right there next to me, I suffered in disbelief that the affair was over. I'd sit in the dark and ruminate about what happened, as if thinking about it over and over could change the outcome. I have a naturally cheery disposition, a toothy smile, and a big bodacious laugh. I think I managed to keep up outward appearances, although I worried if anyone noticed how often I'd type in my password, glance at my phone, then quickly turn it over before kind of slamming it down. This was my ritual, 50, 60, 80 times a day. I was suffering, and with each day that he ignored me, my suffering became more painful. Eight months and 31 days had passed and my daily obsession with him had waned. Somehow I managed to accept that he was never coming back and I needed to move on. I was proud of myself that even in the face of indignity, I hadn't cracked, then texted, or drunk-dialed him one last time. I'd made it. Nine months. The time it takes to have a baby and go from fall to spring. The time to do a final year of learning before earning your degree. Nine months was a symbolic achievement. And then... I walked into the dealership wearing a tight white tank top and capri pants that sat low on my hips. My husband had promised me a convertible for my 50th birthday, and I was dropping by Porsche to preview my options. A sexy silver Carrera S caught my eye, and I walked toward a salesperson to ask some questions. His back was turned to me, but it was unmistakable. He was there at the dealership with his wife, standing by the service desk, talking to the guy about rims or something like that. I veered away from the sales desk toward a little cafe area near to where he and his wife were standing. While inside the cafe, I planned my route back out. I'd turn right out the cafe, walk about ten feet past the bathroom, then make a sharp left down a corridor that felt like a runway toward the service desk. He'd see me, my expression, and feel my presence. I decided I wouldn't look at him, but allow him to take it all in and wonder, does she see me? What's she thinking? My walk back to the showroom was calculated, slow, and grandiose, the performance of a lifetime, and it worked. I sashayed past the exit door and quickly left the dealership. I arrived at home with my hands still shaking and my heart racing out of my chest. I typed in my password and glanced at my phone. Nine months, nine months later, I received his text. I wanted to follow you back there, shut the door, and go down on you. I wish you would have, my love, I said. The next day, he lied to his office about where he was going for lunch and came to my house to see me. We talked, shared, and made love during our afternoon delight. Yep, she did. 
she got him back. He came back. Who was surprised that he came back? She got him to react to her. What she really wanted was him fully. And I'm sure if the story kept going, huh? it was just a one and done. What? David, do you agree with that? You think it was one and done? He never came back again? You don't think they started up? I agree with Samantha. My best suggestion to that woman would be to erase the number and the contact of the guy. Oh, my. And she could have flirted and uh, seduced another guy in that dealership. I know, but maybe she had something for him, John, right? Sometimes you well, have that flame for the one person. Yeah, but I, I I agree that the chance of them running into each other, you know, at that dealership nine months later could have been anybody. And, uh, you know, nine months, let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> oh, my. Clearly no romantics in this room. I feel like... Uh, the longer you're without the person, the more delicious they become, right? Mm. Isn't it like the chocolate cake? The no. Ble- no? No. You don't like chocolate cake? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I would never agree because you have to understand mm. at what terms, let's say implicitly, what are the terms of that silent agreement? Because if you... What silent s- agreement? Between the two of them. We're talking about two cheaters. So recently, I had to take a few tests, you know, routine medical stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. But when my results came back and the doctor called and said she wanted to see me, I got pretty nervous. Knock on wood, after a second visit, everything turned out okay. But it was definitely a rough couple days. It's times like these, it would be great to have a licensed professional therapist to talk to. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional. BetterHelp is not a crisis line, and it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely, all online. It's so easy. You just log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor, and in less than 48 hours, you and your counselor can start communicating. You can schedule weekly sessions by video or by phone, so you don't ever have to leave the comfort of your home or office. Everything you need to help feel better is right there at your fingertips. And BetterHelp is so committed to finding the right therapist to help you, they make it easy and free to change counselors if you feel like you ever need to. Don't go it alone. Try your own licensed professional at BetterHelp. Cheating When Love Lies is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy, and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash lies. That's betterhelp.com slash lies. Get matched with a better help therapist and get started. Uh huh. Two cheaters. And so, what do you mean by that? Like, you get what you married. deserve, they're and both therefore married. I mean, come on. Come it's, on, what? What do you mean by that? Two cheaters, and therefore what? It's your opportunities. When it, it, if you want, if you want to take advantage of an opportunity like that, you know, like. Yeah. It, it's it's, no, I'm it's not so saying, risky. No. It's so risky. So are you saying that ruin. she was justified? It, it, it too bad for her. She got ghosted. She has to suffer because she was cheating. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm, yep. Oh. I, yep. I think it, somebody help me out yeah. here. Somebody absolutely. Anybody have any empathy for this woman? Mm. Not so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, she broke the contract. What contract? The marriage contract. No, nope, the contract she had with the man she was having an affair with. Like, y'all are talking about a contract. Like, what? What contract is there? Well, what is the, what, there's what, an marriage? Under, there's an understanding. No, the marriage. We marriage. Understand. No, the marriage no. contract. The big one. I'm sorry. The marriage contract. Of course, she broke the marriage contract with their dignity. She broke up the contract with their dignity. So she, you're saying, David, she had a contract with herself. It sounds like, yeah. Samantha, you're saying that she had a contract unspoken with the lover. With him. Yes. And what does that entail? What are the terms? Where there were protocols and procedures and limited expectations. And where she got into trouble is she started expecting more. As she admitted, she mm-hmm. started to think of him as her husband, mm-hmm. expecting him mm-hmm. to be accessible mm-hmm. and that was not part of the deal. But how do you control those feelings, right? If she... You have to. Those are obsessions. They're not feelings. Yep. Ooh, exactly. Okay. And also think how do you about do, this. That was insightful. How do you differentiate between feelings and obsessions? Yeah, those are obse- Those are projections, obsessions, mm, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 
she is building up what is called a Frankenstein boyfriend, meaning I take, um, I don't know, the security from my husband, the sex from my lover, mm -hmm. and I create a, a Frankenstein male presence in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Also, think about this. If they wouldn't have met at the dealership randomly, would he ever had sex know. with her again? No. no. And no. then no. She, it would have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Really? Exactly. It was a chance encounter. And then she was not supposed to be available for him because Wait. he hasn't done any freaking nothing for her. I'm so oh so you feel like were it not for that chance encounter, he would not have reached back out to her. Nope. Of course not. No way. Nine so, months. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, that never was, intended so never sad. intended to. <laughs> Did you think that she was bratty? Her behavior was bratty? Or difficult? Not, no. 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 How well, would you I think qualify? by her own admission, she her behavior changed when he started to pull back. Right. And she admitted that she was getting a little, I don't want to use the term hysterical, but or acting not. out mm -hmm. in hopes that he would turn around his behavior and come back to her. Good point. Does that work? I'm going to ask the men in the room. Does it work? Like, does the silent treatment work? Or does getting hysterical work? What helps the man turn the corner to see when the woman is suffering? Both. Both. Or a turn off. Yeah. Or a turn off. Yeah. Yeah. It pushes you. It pushes you farther away. Mm -hmm. It does push you farther away. Do you have an example of when that happened to you that it pushed it away for you? Uh, no. I'm sorry. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I well, don't. then how do you know both push you away if you haven't experienced uh, because it? Because I've been on the other side of it. Where oh, you've been the one I, that's hysterical? And... Yes. What did you do that was quote unquote hysterical? Oh, I, they call it stalking today. <laughs> you stalk? Oh, my God. I, I used to call it aggressive this. following. And what did you do? Let's hear the uh, nitty gritty. Oh, it was, you know, I was just a, such a young man, you know, mm -hmm. in my 20s. Mm -hmm. and You're showing up yeah. at the office. You're showing up at no, the house. No, 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 no. Just, you know, like finding out where she'd be on Friday night or Saturday night. And, right. You know, uh, Miss, Conveniently you know was being the, 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 uh, the, it was like the dawn of car phones. Right. You know, like I'd be the guy that's like, oh, I see your car. I could call her. Right. You know what I mean? And like, what are you doing? And, and, so on, so on. So I and was, how did she I'm, respond? Was she creeped out at the time? No. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. not, not at all. We mm -hmm. would end up hooking up, you know, so. So then know, for a certain, it clearly for a length does of time, work. For a, for a certain length of time. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. then. You know, it's just uh, okay. Samantha, it devolves quickly. Samantha, you're a woman. You, you, okay, I, as a woman, from a woman's perspective, we've heard from John that yes. he became hysterical and obsessed. Have you ever done that? I like to believe I haven't. Mm. Remember how long I've known. <laughs> you. <laughs> Remember, I've known you more than twenty years. Look, I think, and and speaking of <clears throat> twenty years plus, I think what one learns in the course of twenty plus years is what works and doesn't work. And if you become obsessive or stocky, you're just going to drive the person away. That's just human nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I plead the fifth. I've never behaved that way. Oh, okay, well, tell me the worst. <laughs> the worst you've done. Like something that, you know, was right on the precipice of being weird. Okay, well, this was actually probably before I met you. No, oh. actually around Did the same time. Did you have a life before you it met me? It was college days. <laughs> okay. And I met this fabulous Serbo-Croatian, we called it Serbo-Croatian at the time, <coughs> young man in Rome hmm. during my junior year abroad. And I was so crazy about him. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. And then the semester was over and I went back home and I decided I have to go back for Christmas break. And to so, see him. To see him. So I got my very first job because my mother refused to pay for me to go and meet see, this strange right. boy. Now, did he know that you were working for that purpose? He didn't know. He was oh, happy that I was you were just going to show up. I was just going to come, and he knew I was going to come. And so, mm -hmm. what happened? I get there, and I'm staying with friends. But all of a sudden, he's pulling back. And I'm thinking to myself, I've flown how many thousands of miles right, to right. spend time with this guy? Yeah. So. There was a bar that we all used to go to right near Piazza Navona, for anybody that knows Rome. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to get him on the phone because this was oh. before cell phones. Oh. And so I literally got on the train by myself and went to the bar with no shame whatsoever. And there he was, perched with all of his friends, looking at me like, what are you doing? Hmm. And in that moment, you I was knew. miserable, humiliated, and I... Yes. Stayed for one drink and then got the heck out of there. Right. Okay. 
All right. So then why can't you have a little empathy for this babe? Because I was 19. Oh, well, I didn't say how old she was. (laughs) I forgot to tell you the story. She's only 22. No. (laughs) Um, She talks about where she's willing to have sex with her lover. Never in the bedroom. Does it matter where the affair occurs? No. No. (laughs) Not at all. No. No. No, but that's standard practice. It's considered impolite, even more so than cheating, where you do the cheating. Oh. I have friends that go to hotels, for example. Right. Uh, I mean, only for logistic reasons, because uh, in a period when I was uh, I was having too many women at once. What do you mean? You were, were any of them lovers, people that you yeah, should, quote, let's say quote, should one, have been with? One was thinking to be my official woman, but mm-hmm. I, in reality... But she I was had, married. No, no, no. She oh. was my woman. Okay. The point is that they were uh, having different hair. So one was black hair, right. one was blonde curly. So I was trying to avoid the bedroom because the hair were right. too much visible. Yeah. I yeah. remember once I was talking with one who was uh, Russian. She was my official girlfriend. She's um, she was blonde, curly, and she was talking with me in the bed. And I saw oh, a saw. long, straight black <laughs> hair oh, between us. Baby. So luckily, oh my god, what'd you do? On, How'd you get out of that? On her side, uh, there was the um, a glass with water. So I asked her, uh, "Can you please give me the and glass of the water?" Hair. And I grabbed the hair. And oh. I put it away. <laughs> so it's better yeah. to be okay. somewhere else in the house because otherwise the no, you just have to buy bed. dark sheets. No. Exactly. Uh, um, <laughs> no, but then the problem the, is with the blonde. <laughs> right, exactly. So maybe you need a bold. Bold, a bold, bold and shaved right. women. Yeah, bold, shaved but, women. But, you know, if you did it on the couch, that same hair issue, I contend that there's something about the bed that makes it worse. John and David, you say no, but Samantha, I agree with you. It's worse. It's worse. It's worse. I mean, have you ever been cheated on, David? Yeah. And I discovered two times. Uh, what did it happen in your bed? Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. Cerebral could really work for me right now because I'm kind of freaking out. It's back to school. I got to get my daughter ready for school. I got a flood of work after vacation. And this guy I've been seeing, I'm into him. I don't know if I should be. I mean, all this keeps me up at night. You know how it is. It's two in the morning, three in the morning, and your mind's racing and you can't stop thinking. You got a little insomnia. Wouldn't it be great to have someone help you through these difficult moments? With the Cerebral Mobile app, it's like having your own personal care team wherever you are. You can schedule sessions based on what's most convenient for you. You can do your sessions on a laptop or a phone, so you can always find a place at home or at work to have a therapy session. And Cerebral is so affordable. The treatments are one-third the price of traditional therapy. And for listeners of this program, you can receive 65% off your first month of medication management and care counseling at GetCerebral.com cheating. Go to GetCerebral.com slash cheating for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. No. Or the bed you shared with you. I don't know. Okay. Uh, No, no. No, no because with one, we were not living together. So. I mean, maybe it happened in her bed, in the same yeah. bed where I was going yeah. with her and so on. Ick. Possibly, possibly. Ugh. Ick. I'm seeing a moral of the story here. It has something to do with hair. But we Wear stayed... a cap. That, that was our <laughs> beginning. You're cheating, always wear a cap. I know. <laughs> but you're, you're, you have an accent. You're from Italy. Is yeah. it different in Italy? Like, what's the differences for lovers, men and women? How is it different? In Europe than it is here. Uh, well, or is I it? would say I would say that uh, Italians are intense people in anything. So we know that we can be easy at uh, cheating, but not because we are cheaters. But, but isn't because, it more acceptable in Italy? Mm, well, the reactions can be very violent, especially violent. yeah, yeah, especially from women. Yeah, yeah. 
What do you mean? Like yeah, yeah, a woman. Uh, <laughs> what? What did what, you say? The gumad. The gumad. What's that? Like we what are that hot. Is? You know, we are hot-blooded people. Right. So uh, you hear sometimes really that things that generate in a fight and people finish at the hospital, and oh most gosh. of the times are women. Yeah. Wow. Because they okay. go violently crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we are more keen to entering passionate love affairs of any kind it can be a couple it can be affairs uh, we call it uh, we call them adventures huh. the affairs uh -huh. Uh -huh. um oh really well that's interesting because affairs are so so much thrill and yeah. fun and you know and that's escape. what we absolutely that's interesting so do you think that a man and woman can ever presuming that they're heterosexual can a man and woman ever really be friends? Because these people were friends, right, from many, many years ago. Is that really possible? Can men and women be friends? Very difficult. Of course. Yes. Of course. John. I say very difficult. John, how do you say of course? I have plenty of female friends. And you never... Plenty. It always runs into problems when I get involved with a woman. Yeah. You know, and I have to explain that I have female friends. That always happens. Right. But, you know... Friends are friends. You, you know, friends will be there after that relationship. You know what I mean. So, but when the relationship initiates between the man and the woman, it really starts as friends, or doesn't it typically have some sort of attraction that then? Well, I, I probably in my friendship. case probably more more like ex girlfriends, ah, ex relationships well, that, 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 that are still that are that are still they're still friends. We're no, still but great at some friends. point they weren't just With... friends. It started out as. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, 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 mm. Right, I have uh, I have Correct. one female friend and she is my ex girlfriend and we have been together almost ten years. But she started as an ex. I believe as long as there's no physical attraction, you can be friends and stay platonic. If you have that hint of attraction, yes. one sided or both sided, then you're you know it's only a matter of time before somebody gets feelings for the other person. But I absolutely have friends, male friends that I've had for twenty plus years. Zero attraction on day one, zero attraction now. So it's possible. Now, can we bring them in here and see if they feel the same damn way? I am sure of it. Really? But there's, yes. there's also that line where you have, you know, friends with occasional benefits. <laughs> yeah, completely that different happens. category. Right, that completely happens. different category. That happens, you know, and it's, it's, it's platonic and, you know, it, you know, it may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. Once a year, twice a year. Mm -hmm. Five times a year. But those are not friendships. Right. No, yeah, those are not. Of right. course they are. Absolutely. That's well, why I consider them my friends. You know, if they need, listen. If they I know, need but if you're sleeping with them, then they're not friends. No. It's, they're they're, it's, they're it's lovers. Not, it's not Part time a, yeah. lovers. Yeah. It's it's not, it's, it's, it's much simpler than that for me. Much simpler. Right. I don't expect it. I don't expect it. I don't think they expect it. You okay, know, because make it this way. Of... If it was like a guy friend of yours' wife, you wouldn't be occasionally having sexual relationships with her. That's a friend. But if you, there's a sexual element with it, then you're not friends. Am I right, David? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, when the sex is part of the equation, there is a, a give and take and uh a give and take also of the body. Instead, to me, friendship is always even, is always equal. Mm. While in the sex, okay, I had lovers in New York. Let's say when you have a lover, there is always one abusing the other. Abusing? Yeah, because no, uh, one know. is um, more sentimentally right. open. Mm -hmm. And so allows the other one to abuse her because I don't allow anybody to abuse me. So my case is where I was always All the right, abuser. so you're talking about yourself. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, wait, I, I got to depart from you that there's not someone that's, that's a, you know, yeah, with the abuser friend. and the abuser. Right, Samantha? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what you're... I, I don't think it's that binary. Right. You can have a relationship where there's no one person taking advantage of the other. Agreed. It's mutual. Right. Mm, one right. might have more it. feelings for another, yeah. but that doesn't mean there has That's to be something to... nefarious going on. Correct. Exactly. Not something nefarious, not something hurtful, not something to that is to one person's detriment. Mm, I don't believe so. Because soon it's only a matter of time. And uh, I had, It's only uh, a matter of time that yeah. what? Lover, uh, lovers uh, who started crying. Uh, okay, but that's lovers, not abuse. Uh, that's just upsetness. No, because when she couldn't take it anymore from me, 
but it means that so she, she was that ready to cry. Her. Yeah, of course. She was ready well, what, to oh, cry. What do you mean, yeah, of course? What did you do to abuse her? Nothing. We were only doing, uh, we were only having sex, but she was allowing it to happen without asking me. No, you're me. saying that you abused her. What do you mean by that? Abusing means... You're uh, making a conscious effort to hurt the other person no, in some way? No, no, absolutely okay. not. But let's say normally she would have not allowed me to do it, but she was allowing me do because what? she was hoping in something sentimental to you have uh, just a sexual intercourse. Oh, just. Yeah. Let's say the sexual intercourse was normal. But she was doing it. That's basically the asymmetry that there is in a in a fair, in a, um, friends with benefits and so on. Right. That There's always someone cannot... that likes more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But so okay, one. Okay, but that's not abuse. For me, it is because oh. you allow me to use the body, oh, and uh, okay. the one who allows this to happen is doing it as an investment in a potential future sentimental relationship. No, 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 not necessarily. Really? I have one friend that, I, like I said, a couple of times a year, she has no expectations whatsoever. I go see her. Does she have a boyfriend? I don't even ask. Ah, I well, that's I an important question. I, I don't ask. Because if she's... You know, I don't care. Because right. when she invites me to her house, she says, oh, I need a light fixture changed or this or that, the other thing. You know it's, no. yeah. no. you know or, or, it's or, not really about up, the light come fixture. Up, come on you... up. It's, you know, it's an hour ride. I'll make you dinner. <laughs> Oh. I'd have no expectations. I don't have. But you any know when you're driving there that you're going to sleep bar- with her. That's a bar- Poss- It's a possibility. It's bartering. It's possibility. It's what? Bartering. Oh, bartering. Yeah. I, no, well, okay, but it's I, not. I'm almost sixty, so that's right. not really that important for me anymore. What's not that important? Sex. It's 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 nice. Oh, yeah, it's nice. True. It's very nice. Don't oh. get me wrong. It's always oh good. It's always yeah. good. But no, uh, it's not like I was eighteen. David, you're younger, but it's true. As you get older, I mean, I appreciate yes. your candor. Yeah. You know, you pass fifty four, fifty five for the men, yeah. and whoop, you know, it, you turn yeah. the corner. Yeah. But anyway, you're still driving an hour to go get yeah. it. Can I no, say something? With no, with no yes. expectations. You remember uh, uh, Jack Underwood uh, in the Netflix series? You yes. remember him? Yes. He said, um, he mentioned something about Freud. He said, uh, the world is all about sex, except sex that is about power. So even if you are not so much in the lust, for, especially for a man, to have many women who allow uh, him to access them hmm. is a matter of power, not just pleasure. Mm-hmm. So it is mm-hmm. among the manly realm how where you stand in the hierarchy. Mm-hmm. That's why a man becomes a playboy. Mm-hmm. In other words, that's why I'm a playboy. <laughs> yeah. You're a playboy. I just, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want you. you to say that you're abusing women. I mean, I don't know you that well, but no, I, I like to look. It's like when I, I but could if you say, want to say you have power or you feel like there's an uneven playing field, okay. But abuse is a whole other level, too, no, right, Samantha? For me, for me, no. I, let me explain. Wait, abuse, can I hear from her for one second? I just want to hear what she has. Yeah, to say. I think you know words matter. So uh-huh. in our lexicon, when you talk about abuse, it connotes violence. Or someone purposefully hurting another. Mm-hmm. So. No, I don't think so. Abuse is uh, getting something that you normally know would not be um, deserved by you. Let's move on. What is it about someone else that would pull us out of a relationship we're in and drive us to have an affair? What is it? Right, you're married or you're in a long-term partnership, you're living with your boyfriend, Samantha, you're so happy, it's been eight, nine years, wow. What is it that could potentially pull you out of it? Why do people take that chance? Easy answer. Love listening to this podcast? I love that you're here to listen. Do you ever wonder what it's like to create a listening experience like this, week to week? Do your friends always tell you that you should have a podcast? Well, now's your chance. Our podcast network, Podcast One, is looking for the next podcast star. Think it could be you? Enter the self-made podcast competition now to find out. All you have to do is visit launchpadone.com slash self-made for a chance to win a contract with Podcast One valued at over $100,000 in promotion and so much more. 
Enter now until September 3rd and tell all your friends to listen and download. Go to launchpad1.com slash selfmade to find out more. See official rules and sign up for your chance to win. That's launchpad1.com slash selfmade. Oh, easy? Their needs are not getting met. Oh, okay, yes. There's, experts will say, six human needs that we all have. They're all in different orders for different people. What are they, the six needs? You've got certainty, Mm -hmm. variety. I'm writing this down. Okay. (laughs) Significance, very important. Yes, the most important. Mm -hmm. And then love or connection Mm -hmm. and growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. So if you're living your life and more than one or two of those things are out of whack and you find it in a relationship with someone, you're going to be attracted to them. If they start ticking off two, three, four of those needs, you're going to be addicted to them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's exactly what happened to your protagonist. She was, became addicted because she was getting certainty in one level. She was getting variety. She was mm-hmm. getting connection. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. That's, and, that's a woman's list. Oh, what's the man's list? No, that that comes from some sort of bona fide source, I'm imagining. Right? It Samantha? does. It does. Okay. It well, was written by a woman. I could tell you right now. Why? What are your six <laughs> Well, things? it depends. Like, when I was a younger man, sex yes. was absolutely number one. Period. Well, that would be the in Period. the love slash connection bucket. Yeah. Just sex, 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 sex. As a young man, mm-hmm. and then probably uh, Dude, money, sex, money, <laughs> money. money. Oh, you want money from her too? No, no, no. To earn money, to oh. make money, to, oh. to you know whatever. Oh, the things that you need. Okay. Yep. And then food. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Food. Yeah, but those aren't human <laughs> needs. Those aren't your emotional needs that oh, you yeah. need met. Emotion. Uh, well, well, yeah, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. And by the way, women those are six way human needs more emotional than men. Tony Period. Robbins. Mm. I'm sorry, those, those come from Tony Robbins? Yeah, okay. and he's not a woman by any stretch. Right. He's the biggest alpha dog there is. Mm-hmm. He, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I, uh, half of the list, I already lost you. When, really? Uh, oh, you agree with John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your six things? The, the basic, uh, they, they cannot be that long and elaborated. Come on. I mean... Uh, the basic needs must be instinctual. They must be two or three only. And uh, what he said, John, is totally right. I imagine myself uh, in a big bed with my woman, with great food on the bed, and also talking about business with her between one session and the other. That's the paradise. Hmm. Wow. Men are... (laughs) Simple. (laughs) Animalistic. Simple. Yeah, but if you go a level below that, that's satisfying your need for significance. That's mm. satisfying your need for love and connection. Uh, I didn't see the need for significance males. there. That I didn't see beta significance in there. Beta males. This is good for beta males. What? Alpha males are like me and John. In today's highly advanced technological world, can you ever really cover your tracks? I mean, these people were saying how they sent messages, but then they deleted them. Are you really protected in today's world? Can you count on covering your tracks, John? Well, again, not being a cheater, it's not really a big issue for me. If mm-hmm. I'm involved with a woman, mm-hmm. I don't really have to worry about that. I, I, I've never been a cheater. I, I don't I don't. You never do cheated, that. not once. No, absolutely not. Never one time. If, if I'm in a loving relationship where I am in love with a woman. Oh, that, now you're qualifying never, it. Suppose you weren't in love with her. That's never crossed my mind. But you were with her and she was in love with you. Then what? Uh, no, I haven't. No, nope, oh, never nope, have. Okay, no, I have not. Absolutely not. Absolutely okay, not. Hey, John. I'm very happy to hear that. At it's 60, at 60, that's a, an it's a accomplishment. Fact. It's a fact. For a man that only needs food and sex? <laughs> 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 that's <a> well, <laughs> if I've been in a loving relationship and I'm getting that, you know, mm-hmm. it's, there's no reason for me to... Est- and believe me, I, again, you know, it's, I'm not... I've never been in a position where I had dozens of options. Right. You okay. know what I mean? So it's, uh, you know, it's easy. Samantha, it's easy. can you cover your tracks? In today's world? You can try, but if the person's snooping around, it's not so hard to uncover. Mm-hmm. And so why do people take that risk? Because in my point of view, it's very, very hard to get away with it today. Too many cameras, too many apps, too many, just too many technological things that one can access to find out what their partner is doing or not doing. 
So knowing that one still takes the risk, I would have thought that the risk reward ratio would have changed in light of these technological advancements. David, do you agree? Mm, yeah, I agree. The The whole point uh, to me is even uh, why you need to do that, meaning... Why you need uh, to do what? Yeah, all erasing, canceling, oh, uh, you and would? so oh, on. Oh, you're bold. Okay. Because, uh, because let's say we look for those kind of emotions to express ourselves, to uh, liberate our emotional and uh, hormonal charge, you know, the adrenaline, the testosterone, the From libido, etc. Like exactly. what she had with this guy. But basically, if you keep needing to cancel, erase, uh, check out, uh, uh, dissimulate, and so on, it's like castrating the impulse. You know, it's like having an erection and then uh, suppressing your... Uh, stuff is like I've never had an erection so I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I know but I'll, but I'll take your word for it <laughs> it's very powerful <laughs> trying to have those kind of emotion but then suppressing them and denying them and erasing canceling is really a schizophrenic kind of living oh I wouldn't label someone as schizophrenic I, they're trying to protect themselves from being found out right John um I, I, I don't know. I, I am personally trying, presently trying to maintain a relationship with, you know, an ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. that I have no, no, no reason to, to, to get her back or anything. She did. She hurt me mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm she trying to maintain a relationship with her. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, her boyfriend has the technological capability to know every single time that she reaches out to me mm -hmm. or I reach out to her. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of creepy. It really is. Right. You know, well, like, he feels like if she calls me, he calls me right away. Wow. <laughs> it's like, I he's don't know worse what, than you what, showing I don't, up at the. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing to track every single time. Oh, but we got an app for it's, everything. It's that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's really scary. You know, anyways. I want to go back to this idea that we were talking about at the beginning. What demands. Was this woman justified on making on her lover? Did she have the right to make demands on him? I mean, he was sleeping with her. They had a long-term friendship prior to the affair. Did she have the right to make demands? That's just obsession, I think. I just, that, that's, that, you know, everybody's had that as a young person. Obsession. You know, you can't control it. Once it, once it starts to roll, it's very hard to put, to put that... Genie, in the know, box. genie back back in the box. Mm -hmm. You know, once you th are convinced that, oh, this is great, and this and the other thing, and it's getting better and better. But, you know, look at the big picture. You're both married. Come on. You're both adults. You're both mature adults. Come on. Would, come on what? You're both mature adults, and therefore you're not going to... Well then, Want okay. Those six things that Samantha was talking then, about. Then, okay. Mature adults, Bo both and you get divorced. Move have... your, both. Oh, you get, you, both you get divorced, and then you move in your your own direction. But well, you know, it's not so easy to get divorced. We talk well, about this all the time. But, you know, that's why I'm saying. I think it's just it's it's it's. it's but the initial packed. question was: Can you make demands on your lover? If you're both married, and as we said before, there is a certain contract. There's a certain agreement of how you're going to conduct yourselves. And she became, yes, obsessive, but also addicted to that. So her reaction was a result of having him taken away. Mm -hmm. Just as a heroin addict would freak out if they didn't have their heroin. They're hmm. going to act in a certain way. Mm -hmm. They're going to literally withdraw, go mm -hmm. through withdrawal symptoms. And her checking her phone 60, 70 times yes. right, was exactly that's that. Obsessive. That's yeah. the obsessive, addicted behavior. Mm -hmm. And those are chemical. There's no question about it. All your emotions are chemical. There's no, it, that's all that it comes down true. to. These are yes. chemical that is reactions. True. And mm -hmm. once that's taken away, it is similar to what you said, Withdrawal. like a heroin addict. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. Is, it's been taken away. You don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. right. And it is it absolutely chemical. And you have to get it. You, you have to get it back. You're trying to get it back. And, but, you know... Can I tell you a yes, little story? Yes, and I, um, story. I met a woman mm -hmm. once. She was uh, jealous and possessive in a compulsive way. Okay. Mm. We just met and she was, uh, 
I, I was saying I'm going out for dinner and she said, oh, you are uh, out for a date? Uh, why are you dressed for the date? You know, just, mm-hmm. and this was like one day after we met. Wow. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I wrongly started um, instead giving her reassurances, like, no, look, I'm dressed this way and I'm meeting only with guys and I was taking a selfie with the with males, you right. know, to say, look, uh, nothing to worry about. She started losing interest in me and then uh, we ended we ended. Wait, I'm not, even seeing start. The, I'm not seeing the moral of the story. Because uh, jealousy was uh, her chemical brain reaction mm-hmm. that was telling her, you are in love. When I took away that chemical reaction from uh-huh. that neuronal circuit. When you reassured from, her, yes. Exactly. She stopped being jealous for me. Yes. And I'm sure that she uh, went around searching uh, somebody to else to be jealous for. Samantha, how do you respond to that? That's an v- interesting perspective. That is, that is. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Never. No. It, it does have a little bit of the ring of people stick with what they're familiar to, right? If she's accustomed to being in a jealous state, then she's going to go perpetuate that emotion yes. and find someone else. I should to have told, her. I should have kept her in her jealousy. And Why do you saying, miss her? Do you wish you had her back? I, I mean, I didn't do it because I'm a generous person and I don't want anybody to suffer, but I should have left her in jealousy and say, once you will be my girlfriend, then uh, I will only go out with you. So she should have seen the end of jealousy as a reward for uh, our progress. Oh my, instead, that's I, a lot of manipulating and I thinking gave her, I have to do. Instead, I gave her basically the gold medal without doing anything and she <laughs> lost interest. <laughs> what but, are you laughing about? <laughs> Uh, he's 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 a funny guy. <laughs> Why? What's so funny about that? He's a funny guy. I'm just telling you. What do you mean by that? Uh, I you just, disagree with him, Ellen. I'm not disagreeing with him and at what's all. What's so funny about what he's saying? I love that. That just way I gave her the gold medal. <laughs> It's awesome. Oh. That's awesome. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. Well, not so good because I lost her. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds like you really wanted this woman. Uh-uh. It sounds like she's the kind of the one that got away. Yeah, but also. Yeah, but also because I self-inflicted the pain on myself. Do you think that the guy had any loving feelings for this woman? Do you think that he loved her at all and that he missed her during those nine months? Of course. But it just couldn't be reality. He's married with kids. She's married. I don't know. Did she have kids in this scenario? No children? Um, you know... They didn't mention it. There we was don't no mention. mention it. We didn't no mention, mention it. No mention, okay. But he is, he's married with children. Uh, right, let's assume. No, he's married with children. You know, that's... You know, I, I mm-hmm. don't know if she had kids or not, but... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's not possible unless you're going to, you know, both break that bond and, and move forward Well, together. you know, John, there are people that have lovers for years and years and years and years. <laughs> if like I can forever. tell yes. you uh, a story, I... A couple of years ago, I had a Romanian journalist. Uh, she was working as New York correspondent of uh, Romanian TV. Yeah. She was married with a Greek guy. She told me this guy was about to die for heart disease, etc. Oh. So she was basically telling me, wait for me a few years and yes. then we will be together. Yes. She had a, a young daughter. Okay. So once uh, she sent me a video, uh, my personal website went online. And so she showed me in the video the baby girl who was looking at my picture on the computer. Oh, wow. And she was calling me daddy, daddy, no. daddy. That's yeah. just And that was for creepy. me the signal that it was supposed to end. Because, of course, wow. the, you know, the baby girl, any man she liked, she was like two or three years old. So she calls any man she likes daddy. Well, or maybe the mother trained her to say that i either way it was time to go for me and yeah. then i went oh that's a horrendous story horrendous. well i think it could be considered a cautionary tale and i'd love to know what the prologue is it the one that comes after the mm-hmm. story that yeah. continues mm-hmm. but my bet would be that it was a one-shot deal she got her fix going back to the the heroin anecdote and it's kind of sad it's sad. sad. Why? It's sad for her mm-hmm. because I am sure that he's not going to leave his wife. But I don't think twin it was children. ever about leaving the wife. I think it was was the affair going to continue. It. I don't think that it was ever about. And typically, I don't think that the affair is about. 
I'm going to leave my partner. It's about I want to have something adjunct. I want to have True. something extra. But yeah. I think he chose his family. And the only way they could be together is if he left them. And that was not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Do you think he, he was found, not going to have both. Do you think that he went off and found someone else after he supposedly never saw her again, according to the three of you? Do you think he found somebody else? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, David, do you possible. think so? Of course, yeah. Of course. I mean, uh, listen, in New York, I mean, everywhere, but especially in New York, it's full of this kind of um, mm-hmm. geometries. Mm-hmm. Usually they end up at the psychiatric uh, oh my department. God. Oh, I think and, they take uh, you to, to very... Yeah. My, my suggestion oh my to God. those people would be break up from the lover, break up from the husband and wife. I don't know if they're ending up Go in on a dating board. application and start dating again. My last question is, have any of you ever suffered like she did? No. 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 Maybe not for nine months, but you've had a really deep, painful suffering where you just can't seem to get over the person. Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, my first heartbreak, absolutely, okay. in my 20s, early 20s. But it not was since horrible. Then. Absolutely not since then. horrible. Felt like, you know, like you're you're just bleeding and bleeding everywhere, you know, it's just, but you right. know, David? remember this. Yes. Uh, it is scientifically proven that the nerves and the neuronal circuits of the physical pain are the same of the psychological pain. Mm. So when somebody uh, throws uh, humiliation, uh, even the silence uh, on the you. Silence is devastating. Yeah, I mean, you have to react sharply because that person intentionally uh, wants you to be an arbiter, to live on standby, to live to punish you basically for something you did or you said, and you. Well, my question was: Did you ever feel like this protagonist did in the story? Did you ever feel like she did? I mean, she should have sent him. No, to fuck. I'm asking you how you felt. Did you ever feel that way? I had compassion for her because. Did she... you ever feel that way after a breakup? You, David. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course, yes. I mean, the breakups are always very, very similar. I mean, the way you oh. feel after, the feel you way afterwards, you you so feel you overexposed. Very Don't you very get deep. used to it. You, you are overexposed. You get used to it, and every time it's less and less, and it's yeah. quicker to get over. I agree, I agree, I really? agree. Samantha, I agree. you get the last word. She... I don't know that I've ever Yeah, had you did. I remember in your twist. Full, ex- <laughs> full of that full experience, but I will say the worst breakup is the one that's either a shock yes, Oof. or where you absolutely knew the relationship was going in one direction, and it absolutely was not going in the other direction. So I think the shock and awe are the ones that are the hardest to get over and the ones you can be a little bit obsessive about. Mm -hmm. Remember that every delusion starts with an illusion. So you elude yourself and then you get deluded. So I think it's... uh, Are you writing a philosophical book or something? (laughs) (laughs) Well, in Italy we are philosophers. Oh my goodness. And I think uh, it's painful because, uh, or at least in my cases, because I was not forgiving myself to have allowed myself to get overexposed, to not have taken in consideration the red flags, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in reality is like uh, 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 facing your fallacies. That's all. Oh my God. You got a book in here, bro. Let me tell you. It's gonna you get a, out in a few months. You got a big book in here. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, some great ideas, some great uh, points of view. Thank you for listening to Cheating When Love Lies. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. See you next time. Mm